I'm John Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. If you've been injured in a car accident, call America's largest injury law firm. For over 35 years, my mission has been to deliver more for our clients, to deliver more for you. Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Some of the toughest, most pointed interviews I've seen recently on television were conducted by Leland Vetter. He is tone deaf to groupthink. He just asks what he thinks is required in the moment. Guy covers a lot of different stories that the mainstream media isn't focusing on. Leland is exactly off air as he is on air. What I love about that is that it's pure authenticity. Leland Vetter, reporting with respect for all Americans. Trust News Nation, news for all Americans. KTLA 5 News, now weeknights at 7. Now we're for a wild chase in South LA where police are in pursuit of a carjacking suspect in a stolen box truck. Good afternoon. This is the KTLA 5 News at 4. I'm Samantha Cortese. And hi there. I'm Courtney Friel. Officials say a 50-year-old man was struck by the truck as the crime unfolded. KTLA 5's Angelique Cockaday is live in South LA with the story, What Happened? Samantha and Courtney, we're live here at the intersection of 77th and Broadway, where this man was struck down earlier today. It's also where police spent most of their day collecting evidence, talking to businesses in the area, trying to piece together what led them on a 20-minute long police chase to begin with. Two scenes. One man is in the hospital, another in custody, accused of stealing this white box truck and leading police on a 20 minute long chase through South LA on Friday. To me, that's normal because, I mean, it's, it's a really bad area right here. So. According to police, the first call came in just before noon near the area of Vernon and Denker Avenues on reports of a stolen box truck with the victim hanging on to its back. Shortly after, police located the truck and initiated a pursuit, positioning multiple spike strips and flattening two tires, finally leading to the suspect's arrest near Normandy and Vernon, four miles from where the Los Angeles Fire Department says the victim, who had been hanging on to the truck as it swerved through streets, was hit by a vehicle at the intersection of 76th and Broadway. The police station is right there, so there's always cops coming out really fast for all kinds of pursuits. Although police have yet to confirm if he was hit by the truck or another vehicle, people who work in the area say the accident is not entirely surprising. Right here there's an intersection. Uh, there's been a few accidents right here, so I mean it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Now we are trying to get more information and confirm if the uh, if the victim was the owner of the truck or not. But again, he was taken to the hospital, and we're continuing to check on his condition. For now, reporting live here in South Los Angeles, Angelie Cockaday, I'll send it back to you in Hollywood. Angelie, thank you. We have new details on the Metro bus hijacking that killed a passenger early Wednesday morning. Authorities have now identified the victim as 48-year-old Anthony Rivera of L.A. Police first got the call about the armed suspect, Lamont Campbell, after the bus driver activated a panic button. Campbell held the driver at gunpoint, prompting a police pursuit. When the chase came to an end in downtown L.A., officers found Rivera suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He later died and Campbell remains in custody. There is developing news in Lakewood today where a cyclist was killed after a violent crash involving a car and a school bus. It happened this morning at the intersection of Norwalk at Del Amo Boulevard. This is across the street from Artesia High School, but no students were on the bus at the time, fortunately. Police say a black Honda sedan ran a red light and hit the bus, then veered onto a sidewalk where it hit an elderly woman who was waiting at the corner on a bike. And the other car uh, came to the intersection. The collision occurred, and the other vehicle, the Honda Accord, uh, did uh, skid out of control and uh, unfortunately uh, struck and killed a pedestrian that was on that corner. Uh, from what I've been told, uh, she was standing on the corner with her bicycle, uh, probably waiting for one of the lights to change to, to cross the street. The school tells KTLA it provided mental health professionals for students who may have witnessed the accident. In Lancaster, another school bus crash, and this one was also deadly. No children were aboard the bus at the time of the crash. L.A. County Sheriff's Department says a woman driving a Kia Sorento was killed after swerving and colliding head-on with the bus. Two people on that bus were hurt but are expected to be okay. And we turn now to 
Helene, which has been downgraded to a tropical depression. The historic storm is wreaking havoc across the southeast, causing multiple causing flooding in multiple states, leaving millions without power and widespread damage. At least 40 people have died since it roared ashore late last night in Florida as a Category 4 hurricane. There's some areas that we can't even reach just because of roads uh, being closed, roads being washed out, and not being able to get there. So far, a state of emergency has been declared in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas and Virginia. Stay with KTLA 5 for continuing coverage on Hurricane Helene. We'll have a live report from Tallahassee, Florida coming up in the next half hour. And for the latest anytime, go to KTLA.com or download our free KTLA 5 News app. Of course, Vera has been here all day long monitoring Helene for us. We, what's the latest? We have. Well, the latest, Courtney, is that we actually have a bit of good news. Now, this is a good news uh, time because the system has definitely slowed down. The wind gusts, especially this morning at 11 o'clock, they were still clocking at about 60 miles per hour. Now they're down to 45 miles per hour. The sustained winds have stayed steady at 35 miles per hour, which is still pretty significant and pretty impactful but what else has changed is the direction stayed the same but the actual speed at which this system is moving has also slowed down so that is good but with that also comes some trouble because remember that as this system moves slower and slower it gives the uh, system better opportunity to drench that particular region as it slowly treks along when it moves fast it's in and it's out and it's gone and that actually helped parts of Florida but now that it's settling into the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley, that's not particularly great news. Even though we're not seeing any heavy downpours, especially near the Tennessee Valley, uh, as we take a look at what's going on in the Ohio Valley, that's a different story. These heavy raindrops, these heavy downpours, I mean, they have been with us all day long since at least 10 o'clock this morning, and it doesn't look like they're subsiding. Uh, however, anywhere you happen to be in this region, you are going to experience flooding and over the next several days the flooding is really what's going to be devastating to many people because even if your roof isn't blown off you are still going to have to deal with the inundation of all of the water and the aftermath and the cleanup of all of that uh, so when I come back we'll take a look at our local weather it's going to be a very pleasant mild weekend but we do have one area where we do have some excessive heat so I will have those details for you in just a few minutes back to you guys for now Vera, thanks so much. There's more to come on our KTLA 5 News at 4. Laz joins us live. Hey, Laz. Hey there, guys. And there might be a big merger on the horizon in the satellite TV industry. If you're a direct TV or dish customer, you're going to want to pay attention to this. to win our Justin Timberlake giveaway. Two tickets and a stay at a luxury hotel. Watch for details Sunday at 10 a.m. Maybe it's your mom, the kids next door, or even you. 15 million Californians have health care because of Medi-Cal, but budget cuts have left patients waiting months just to see a doctor. That's why voting yes on Prop 35 is so important. It guarantees health care funding that can't be redirected. So we train more health care workers and keep hospitals and ERs open. Yes on 35 protects Medi-Cal for the ones you care about the most. The California Department of...